we happened this past week, which I really enjoyed as a pastor. It's, uh, there's so many things that are blessings and opportunity to be a part of people's lives and transitions is that this last week, Laura Southwell, she moved from back, back from Alaska, so that's a move, moved to Alaska. How long were you there? 13 years, it only seemed like eight, I tell you. So she came back and, and, and then uh, she said, asked if I would uh, come over. She had this, this week off as a teacher, said she's moving in, would I come over and bless her house? And so I said, certainly. And so Linda and I got to drive out into uh, parts of Douglasville and I made it back and uh, so that was good. And uh, what, a, what a, a blessing there was a, when I pulled up in front of her house, there was a little lady from across the street and before I could even get the door open, she, she was, when I opened it, she was right there. She goes, are you moving into that house? And I said, no, ma'am, I'm not. But I know the young lady who is, and I'm here, I'm her pastor, and I'm here to bless her house. And it, it, it just changed the entire uh, conversation when she knew I was a pastor, uh, which other, a lot of times it goes the other way. And, and, um, and so uh, I told her, I said, we've got this nice young lady that I've known since she was a little girl, and she's moving into your neighborhood. You're going to love her. And she's like, oh, this is wonderful. We're going to look out for her. And that, she went into the history of all her neighbors. And um, we, she, said, she said, and I'm, you know, one day you're going to see me in church because I'm going to hop in the car with her when she comes to church some Sunday morning. So when she does, we'll like give her a standing ovation or something. That would, that'd be, that'd be exciting. I'm looking forward to her visiting us at some point. But what a blessing it was to, you know, and, and you know, I've said this before is, you know, I, I get to bless people and bless houses and, and jobs and all, I pray for y'all. But we all have the opportunity every day to be a blessing for others, but also to bless them. And you don't have to raise your hand to do it. But if somebody's walking by and look like they're struggling, just say a prayer to the Lord. Lord, bless that person. Uh, when, it, when we're thinking about our children, Lord, bless my kids. Thinking about our enemies, think, Lord, bless, bless that person. Uh, let them know your love and grace and uh, that each and every one of you go out as an ambassador and a minister for God. And whether we do it visibly where people can see it and touch it, or just prayerfully, prayer, prayer changes things and blesses. So I just want to encourage you this morning, go out and bless others along the way. Laura, thank you for inviting me over to do that. Our New Testament reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 through 32. Jesus told them in another parable, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. Uh, these are God's words. May he add his blessings upon them. I, I, I'm, I'm, this sermon is, uh, is a, a scripture that is fairly familiar to a, a lot of us, uh, but there's so many different ways to look at it and to preach it. And as I've, I've looked at it and prayed over it, um, I just I was, you know, God, I, I felt like it was supposed to be, preach and preach it this morning. In fact, we have a, our leaders retreat coming up in a couple of weeks. And Michelle, our clerk of session said, I think we want to, at our, at our leaders retreat, we're going to talk about the, the mustard seed and having mustard seed faith. And I said, well, okay, there's lining up close together. And often God does that when, when, uh, when we're working on our services and, and things, sometimes we plan it. And sometimes it's just happening, and sometimes you'll come up to me and say, that was something God, you know, just for me today, how'd you know? I said, I didn't know, uh, but God knew. And so hopefully today, if not for you, maybe it's for somebody beside you. But we, uh, we, we hear about this mustard seed faith and planting of seeds, and it reminded me this, uh, this past week that last fall we started looking at, I wish Charles was here this morning, I think they're maybe on a trip, uh, and... and that we, we started planning and preparing our raised garden beds in the back. And it's, they're gorgeous. They're wonderful. And I, I keep trying to get into the spirit of growing vegetables. And I had this, uh, this dream of, uh, it was a daydream, but I was thinking about, wouldn't it be wonderful if I could find some taco seeds? Um, uh, and if I could have any kind of seeds that I wanted, what kind of seeds would I have? And maybe it would be a, a pizza seed. You put a pizza seed in there and it grows. All of a sudden these pizzas start growing out of the ground. And uh, wouldn't it be wonderful if you, if you could have any kind of 
growth in a garden bed that you wanted, nachos, pizza. I'm, I'm really getting hungry. Pancakes, we certainly would want on a day like today where they wouldn't have to go and do all the hard work. Uh, but it takes work. You've got to plant these seeds, and sometimes you plant a seed. There's a story of, of, of a group that were, uh, they were giving out free seeds. The only problem was they had these bags of seeds, and they didn't know what kind, what they would grow. And so people had to plant these seeds, trusting that it was going to grow something that they liked. Imagine if, you know, if we, and, and I think that really is an analogy for us in faith, because we plant what we think might be love or grace or something into somebody's life, but we don't know what that's going to look like in, in terms of how it's going to grow up in someone's life. And we just have to do it by faith and trust that God's got a, got a good plan with the seeds that we're planting. The mustard plant, um, it's the, the, the parable from the day. It was a, a, a plant that was believed by many to be a, a, a shrub that grew as, as, as tall as 8 to 10 feet high. And it had all sorts of purposes. It provided ground cover for vine, grape vines and that sort of things out in the fields. It provided a sanctuary for birds to come and, and land in the, in the branches or the, the vines of the, the, the mustard seed plant. Um, it was something that was very important. It, the, the little seeds, were because they're so small, if you've, if you've ever seen mustard seed, they're just, they're that big. You see, you see, you just barely make it enough room to see a little light in between it, and that's about as big as they're going to be. And, and so they were very easy when the wind would blow to get up in the air and to, be, uh, to travel and to go great distances and then start, you know, as they do, to be pollinated. They have the bees. It was great for the bees. And who knew? The mustard seed plant, and you get a jar of it, and it's all this little thing. And you put one of those... I might go put a mustard seed plant, uh, mustard seed in the, in the garden and, and a few of them and see if anything comes up. And if it does, it wasn't me. Somebody else did it for me. That's, uh, so it, these, these mustard seeds, Jesus is trying to make a point, and this, the point that he was trying to make was that it, it, although it was the smallest of seeds, so small, that when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants. It, it turned into a really big plant. And uh, as it said, becomes a garden tree, becomes a tree so that the birds could come and perch in its uh, branches. When I think about, I love reading the Gospels, especially around the time of uh, Easter, uh, as Jesus was, we're hearing the stories of how Jesus impacted and touched people's lives. And, uh, and, and the people that he touched, he planted seeds of faith. We're told in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, 9, that, that even our faith is a gift of God. So he plants these, these small little seeds of faith in our, it's a kind of a two-way kind of thing. Our faith is directed towards Jesus. Uh, he plants the seed in us first so that it might grow. And, and we have the opportunity to be like those early seeds in, around where Jesus was that, that take off and pollinate into other people. And so Jesus was walking around planting seeds of faith by the deeds that he was doing, the words that he was teaching, and, and, and these people, they were not educated. Uh, they didn't have wealth of any measured uh, wealth. Uh, they were from, not from the group in power. They were often the ones that were on the outside and the ostracized. And yet, they changed the world. And, and it's obvious to me why he did that, because if, if they had been rich, if they'd been powerful, if they had great skills, they would have, people would have looked at them and gone, oh, it's just because they... They, they speak so well, or it was because they have so much knowledge or they have so many connections. And Jesus wanted the world to know that he was going to use people that could not change the world to change the world. And, and uh, he continues to do that as well. I'll, I'll share this again today. As, as, as I'm not just repeating without knowing it, but I've had a few friends over the years that have become ministers after I did. And I asked them because I was kind of surprised. And I, and I said, well, have, when did you start thinking about becoming a pastor? They said, well, when I saw you go off to seminary and I thought, if anybody could do it, if you could do it, anybody could do it. And, and so they became pastors. And, and that's okay. That's a great thing that God could look into see because you'd have to go way back to see what I was, uh, the mess I was back then, and that God could call somebody like me to do something that he can, really can call anybody to do great things 
um, that, that we, uh, we see that, that, that he reached into that whole group, those early disciples, and he kept nurturing those seeds. He kept teaching and loving, and those seeds, it took over three years or three years about to, to reach and, and assemble that group and to put his love and faith in them and watch it, nurture it, so that, that when the time came, uh, that they would begin to do, it, it, would, it would seem like it'd be so much easier. Jesus just stayed, continued to do the miracles, continued to change lives. Um, if Jesus would have been just, you know, he, he was God in the flesh, let's just keep that going. But there was a plan that God had that said, no, the, the Son of God would be crucified, resurrected, and, and that he would ascend into heaven. But he would change the world through ordinary, everyday people. In Matthew chapter 17, verse, 70, tw verse 20, verse 70, where did I get that? After healing a boy, uh, he thought to be possessed by a demon. They asked why they couldn't accomplish this, Jesus said. This is another instance where uh, the, the mustard seed was mentioned. And it says, then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, why couldn't we drive it out? And he, being Jesus, replied, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, I have, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, uh, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Now, a life in Christ does not depend on the size of our faith. Uh, it, it's the object of our faith. And perhaps the disciples in that early journey of theirs, um, that before the Holy Spirit had come into their lives to help them become more empowered by God, they thought, hey, I, I can't do this. I want to heal this person. I want to do that. Jesus could do that. But maybe there was this doubt in their minds and this doubt that they could be the ones that could live as Jesus lived at that point. They were still seeing themselves as the old creation, Paul would later say in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And for us to be able to do the things that God wants us to do, uh, we need to, to realize at some point that we are a new creation. No matter what anybody else says about you, you're too slow, you're not smart enough, you're lazy, you can't sing, or all those things. It's, it is God who determines the kind of ministry that you will have, the kind of impact you will have, the kind of growth and the kind of change that you will have. And sometimes that little seed in us, it hasn't grown big enough yet because that seed in them, it was small at that moment, that seed of faith. But as we continue to follow that, it would, it would grow into life-changing faith. Romans chapter 8, verse 11 says, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us. Wow. Can you imagine the kind of power that it had to take to raise a dead man from the grave, to raise Jesus who was dead? And, and, and that power is the same power that, that we are told that lives in us by the Apostle Paul. Uh, that, that little bit of of, of power that starts off and it keeps growing and growing and growing and 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 we hear uh, that that we have the opportunity to grow in our in the spirit and, and and in our relationship with god the question i always have when i have these two passages one about the the first one about the our faith being like the mustard seed faith and then why we can't do it because of the mustard seed and and it's it's we have weak faith so I, I, I write down on the paper, so why, why can't I move that mountain? I, I've got a little bit of faith. Whatever you have, there's, I talk to people a lot and they go, well, you know, I, 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 I struggle. I've been praying about this or something for forever and it, it hasn't grown and it, the, the things haven't changed. And so I, I don't know that I have the complete answer this morning. But I wrote down some things that helped me and helped me when I think about it. It's, it, it's partly, I think, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, we, we want to pray, God, I want you to do this. And God, I want you to do it in this way. I want it to look like this. But then we need to remember, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy king, not my will, 
but thine be done. And sometimes, I, I, a lot of times, God has a plan that's bigger than I can see, and it's a different plan than I can see. Uh, sometimes if I talk to people and share these answers, they say, well, I, that's not a good enough answer. It's the only one I've got, is that we, we pray and what, what our prayers are in response to uh, what God's doing in our midst, and we need to pray for his will. We see that when Jesus was in the garden preparing to be crucified, he said, God, if, if possible, take this from me. And we know that it was possible, but it wasn't God's plan. And it wasn't God's timing. And Jesus said in, in his prayer, not my will, but thine be done. Your will, God, be done. Paul, the Apostle Paul, who had all kinds of faith, he had a, a, a big mustard seed faith. He also had a thorn in the flesh, and we don't know what that thorn in the flesh looked like. But we, we know that, that God was working in his life, and when Paul said, please, I, I prayed for this over and over, take, take it away from me, and the response that he got was, this is something you're going to have to live with, but I'll give you the grace to get through it. And, and certainly he did, whatever that thorn was. Did Paul have faith? Absolutely he had faith. Faith to move a mountain, but that struggle was not taken away. Why? I don't know. But I know a lot of people continue to be blessed by him and his constant faith in the middle of all kinds of uncertainties and difficulties. Uh, he continued to trust in God. I've, I've shared this before as well. If, I, if Jesus were here in, in Ackworth, I, I sometimes wonder if he wouldn't use a parable somehow like the kudzu vine. Now, there, aren't as, there are not as many kudzu vines in Ackworth as there used to be. Uh, they have been taken down, stripped, and, and done away with, and all kinds of commercial places have been put up. But one day, the kudzu vine may have the... Uh, May, may be the kudzu vine revenge. And one day it all starts pop, popping up from the ground and we thought we've taken care of it and it's, uh, it's covering up. I used to drive around and see houses covered with kudzu. It starts small, but it goes way down into the ground and it's very difficult to get rid of. You know, sometimes uh, even we can't see what God's doing deep in our life and in our hearts. He's doing stuff way down deep. And we may look at somebody else and judge them not to be of great faith or not to, uh, to trust in God as much as we would like to them to or that we think we do. But the truth is we really don't know. Our job is not to judge the size of what God is doing in somebody based on what we see with this little mustard seed that's been planted in somebody else. I think our job is to walk alongside people and go, hey, what's going on in your life? Is there something I can help you with? Hey, what's happening with you? Is there something I can pray for you for? Can I put you on my list? Can I just sit and talk with you for a while? And our job is to do what the, the raised bed gardeners will do soon plant a bunch of seeds and wait for the pizzas to come up. And, and for a while we'll wonder, won't we? Did they do it right? Did they water it enough? Did they water it too much? Is the ground the right kind of ground? Is the seed the right kind of seed? Did they get, did they get uh, conned into believing that they're growing carrots? And really what they're growing is cucumbers? I have a confession to make. You ready for this? You know me for many, many years. Recently, I started eating vegetables. I'm sorry. I know what you think of me. I know this ruins your vision of me. I, I, I've been eating uh, French green beans. They're pretty good. Some asparagus. Yes, asparagus is yes. Yeah, you. Some of y'all don't like asparagus, do you? I've been eating some... some um, what kind of, what, roasted vegetables. Now, they're really good. I've learned that if you put enough stuff on vegetables and you cook it enough, you may have cooked all the good stuff out of it, 
but you can still say you ate vegetables too. Broccoli, I'm still not sure about. Roasted broccoli with a lot of cheese and a little bit of other stuff on it, pizza sauce, it's not bad. But we as Christians, you know, we, we are called to be planting seeds, uh, God's seeds, and trusting that he's going to do the work. One of the challenges of being a pastor is you don't get a lot of days where you can go and bless a house and say, I, I, I saw that. I, I went, my task was to bless a house. I blessed the house and I left. There's so many times I pray with people, talk to people, do things, and you just don't see what God's up to or, or know down the years if, if it made any difference. You have to trust, trust and hope that it is. On Tuesday night, I, I, I had a friend who was in my, the last church. We've been friends for 35 years. He was in the church that I was in in Columbus, Georgia. We don't see each other a lot, but... About twice a year, we'll play around to golf, and we'll keep in touch and call. And uh, he sent me a picture, and he was out to eat with his wife and uh, another couple. And he said, I think you might recognize this other couple that's with us. Um, and indeed, I did. A number of years ago, uh, now, uh, three or four, I think, Paul, and my friend Paul and his wife, uh, Reed, now Rita, came here and during vacation Bible school we snuck in here and married him real quick so he lives in Columbus was married here the other couple a few of you know um, he grew up partly in in Columbus and, and part of the time here Marv and Janet West and as they were sitting there and I got a picture from my from my friend all four of them he said can you imagine two couples that you married at Mars Hill sitting and having dinner together here in Columbus, Georgia, and doing well. He said, you really, you know, you blessed us. You had a nice, nice compliment there. And I said, texted Paul later and said, how did, how did, did you know Marv and Janet before? He said, well, we go to church together. And we're in a small group together. And my wife plays pickleball with Marv and Janet. And I didn't, we didn't know until we were sitting here talking and we started sharing our story. And our story was, how'd you guys meet? And they said, well, we met and then we got married at Mars Hill and that, and my friend Paul said, in Ackworth, Georgia? He said, yeah, who married you? Pastor Bryant, who married you? Pastor Bryant. <laughs> I had no clue. There was a seed that was planted here that's been taken off into the wind and taken to Columbus, Georgia. How about that? And I know both couples, and they're doing well. Now, there are hundreds of stories like that in your life where you've, you've encouraged somebody, where you've touched somebody, and God has done something wonderful in their lives. You may not know about it yet. God was just kind enough to let me know about one little small way. Don't think you have to do something big. Maybe sometimes doing that small thing is the biggest thing you can do. As I shared here a couple of uh, weeks ago, and, and Tony and Donnie all were uh, out of town, and I, I mentioned uh, your brother. We've told that story before when I was the associate pastor in Charlotte, and Tony's brother was, uh, was an associate, was a retired minister, and I met him, and I said, you know, how God has worked across the years for me to come and reunite, but also it, the, the, I think three young men who've come up to me in the last, uh, last um, year and said, you know, I think I might want to be a minister. And you guys know maybe one of them. Um, you know, I, I don't know what, I, what, what the impact is of my time, our time here on these youth, but uh, it, it seems like some of them may do some great things in the kingdom of God. Sometimes we think what I did wasn't that big or that important. What I would say is you don't have any idea. Seeds in the ground, nurture it, let it grow, give thanks for it, and trust that God's going to do something big. And, and, and I believe that uh, the Mars Hill is, has the opportunity to keep doing big, awesome things. I believe Mars Hill is right here where it's supposed to be. 
and, uh, and he's got great things for this, the, the future of this church. And we're called to keep just trusting and believing that, that he is amazing and wonderful and has a great plan for us all. Let's pray. God, thank you for the little seeds of faith that have been planted in our lives here in this church. And thank you for all the, the seeds that we've planted in uh, other people's lives. Uh, it may be not time for some of them to mature, but help us to trust that you're still at work. Help us not to get discouraged when we think, ah, I just don't have enough faith. Help us to remember that it, it may, the faith that we have may look a little different when it comes up out of the ground. But God, that you do have your, a good plan for us and uh, that you, you do a wonderful thing in our lives and in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you'd stand and sing with us this morning.
again, God is, God is a way maker. And he's making a way in, in ways that we can't often see. And often, those prayers that I've prayed and I thought, well, if I just had enough faith, this or that would have happened. At the end of the day, I say, you know, I'm so thankful God didn't answer that prayer in that way. Uh, that he had a plan and it was so much better than the one I had. It's so different. But I can see in hindsight, God was working all the time. And he's working even now. As we uh, lift up our prayers, we want to thank uh, Sharon, pray for Pray for Sharon Large, who's having tests on her heart. I want to pray for Ella Inman, who had some surgery on her shoulder and is going through rehab for a bit. She's very uh, active and out doing a lot of things. So pray that that, I think they were able to do some arthroscopic kind of work in there. So pray that that goes well. Joe Sinebogan's at home recovering. He's going to be eight weeks or so um, without being able to put any, any weight on his, on his leg where he broke his leg. But Joe, uh, Joe doesn't give up. He said, I said, well, how are you doing? He said, I'm doing good. I'm, I'm, putting, I'm putting pressure on my toe, my big toe. I'm putting it down, and I'm exercising my big toe. I said, good job, Joe. You just keep doing that, and you'll be up walking. You know, mindset is so important when we're going through stuff and our faith, how that works together. But pray for Joe as he's recovering. If you're watching at home, Joe, keep moving that big toe. We're praying for you, brother. I want to pray for Jane Kunkel's mom who's had pneumonia and sepsis and pray that uh, there's some healing there and treatment and, and just uh, hope that, that that gets better. Uh, we want to pray for our youth. Thank, thank God for them that they're, they're, they're trying to raise some funds for the summer activities. Um, that they're, that they're, they pray that they keep close together and keep growing. It's hard to be uh, a young person, a young person in church these days. They need it so much. but. Um, there's so much in the world uh, to, to pull kids away from church and young people um, and we, we, the ones we have, let's cherish them, support them and, and keep lifting them up in prayer. So even if you, you don't, uh, don't feel like eating some pancakes today, stop on by and drop $10 in the basket and tell them to send me a couple of extra sausages if you want. If you, uh, <laughs> And uh, so God, God is, is doing so much of this and, and more. Uh, just remember to go back through our, our website, and there's a whole lot to sign up for in terms of things coming up, uh, fellowship opportunities especially. Make sure you sign up so people can prepare for you properly. Let's go before God and, and pray. God, we thank you and praise you for your, your goodness, and, and uh, God, you're continuing to work in this church, in this community, in the world world is a mess but god you are greater than any mess we can make in this world uh the the, the solution may be different than we see in our times and in, in our eyes but god i believe that you're still doing great things and you will continue to do those in the future so lord help us to suspend our judgment about how good or bad something is and just keep trusting that you're in charge but lord we come to you in a moment of quiet to give thanks and to uh, to lift up our prayers to you, Lord, we come. God, we, we ask that we would have the courage to live out the Lord's Prayer, that we would pray that regularly, and that each day we would look at the, the day's events and, and trust in you to, uh, to bring your will into existence into our lives, and for us to then give you thanks no matter what that looks like. As Jesus taught his disciples to pray, we pray this morning, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen 
So as, uh, as we go this morning, we have the offering plates in the back. Give as the Lord has laid it on your heart to give with a cheerful heart and trusting in him. And, uh, just, uh, but don't stop here. Keep giving out in the world and wherever you are, where you're working, all the things you're doing, where you're playing, and uh, where you're reaching out uh, to other people. Go and be a blessing. And as, as we leave this morning, I'm going to bless our food because I know you won't be able to eat it until I get over there. And if, if, uh, you, it'll be a minute. So let me, let me bless the food. God, uh, bless our fellowship and the food and the hands that prepared it. And God, thank you that we get to spend a little bit more time together for those of us who can sh spare a few moments today and uh, just help us to, uh, to, to be thankful in all that we say and do. And uh, we, we, uh, we, uh, did, I, we, did I say the Lord's Prayer already? I did? All right, I got my mind going a couple of other places this morning. Uh, so Lord, I won't say that again. Uh, and uh, thank you for our opportunity to, uh, to be together in, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. You ever have one of those what are they, brain cramps or something? Whew. It's, uh, and you don't have to get old to do that, do you? No, no. It, it just happens. Um, and and, I, and I, I really, um, Marcy, after one of my other mo Sunday morning faux pas a few weeks ago, she said something I wish that somebody had sent me 30 years ago. She said, Brian, you know, you just have a job where you make all your mistakes in public. Uh, we, we uh, most of us have, have uh, lives where people don't get to see all of our mistakes at quite the, you know, the visibility, and that was very helpful. I, I, I wish you'd let me know earlier. That's, I really do. <laughs> may God bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be and abide with you all, both now and forevermore. Go in peace. Next week's communion. Prepare your hearts for communion, and we'll have our path offering as well. And uh, for, let's go out into the day and live it for God. Thank you. Love you.